let me turn to Trita Parsi. He's the executive vice president of the Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft, and he joins us from here in Washington. Um, Trita, what do you make of this resolution at the UN Security Council? Will it make a difference on the ground? It will make a difference on the ground if the United States decides to help implement it. If the Biden administration, however, only allows it to pass, which means the shift from its previous position of obstructing uh, a ceasefire, but then does not do anything in terms of pressuring Israel to abide by it, then we will not see a difference on the ground and we will also not see a reduction of the pressure internationally and domestically on the Biden administration. In fact, I think it will intensify because it will become even more clear that the Biden administration in that scenario, if that happens, is dragging its foot rather than actually actively pushing for ceasefire. But are we seeing a shift in the U.S. position, Trita? This is the first time the United States has actually abstained from this kind of resolution. Does that, in fact, send a message to Israel? It certainly is a shift. What we've seen prior to this is only a rhetorical shift in which the administration started to use the word ceasefire and started saying that it's in favor of a ceasefire. But it's not until today that we actually have seen a real shift in terms of uh, its posture and position. Now, whether that then again entails helping implement it or not remains to be seen. What it is a message to Israel, without a doubt, and we've seen the prime minister's response to that. So what do you make of the timing? I mean, why finally now, six months, nearly six months into this war, some 31,000 dead, why did the United States finally decide to abstain? I think there's three factors that helped explain why this abstention came at this point. First of all, tensions between Netanyahu and Biden have increased, and I think we're reaching a point in which Biden simply cannot continue to give this uh, unconditional support for Israel any longer. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, a problem uh, for the United States. The two other factors are directly related to that. One, international pressure on the United States has steadily been growing, and perhaps most importantly, the administration is starting to realize that the consequences of the domestic pressure on him, growing as it has been, is going to have an impact on the elections. So the domestic pressure actually has been successful. It's taken a while. It's still not where it should be in terms of where Biden's position is on this, but we're starting to see it having an effect on Biden. More than, as I mentioned, a staggering death toll. Most are women and children, hunger, malnutrition, shortage of food. Uh, so, Trita, is there a realistic off-ramp, if you will, uh, to end this nightmare with all the things we just talked about and the U.S. perhaps not going beyond abstaining at the U.N. Security Council? There definitely is an off-ramp. There's absolutely nothing that says that this needs to continue. On the contrary, it can rather easily stop if the United States and the Biden administration actually ceases to provide the weapons to the Israelis that they are using at an extremely high pace. According to an Israeli general himself, the Israelis would not be able to continue the bombardment of Gaza for more than five days. So the United States has a tremendous amount of pressure. Up until today, we have not seen Biden being willing to exert any of that leverage uh, uh, and, and pressure on Israel. And again, it remains to be seen if he's willing to go all the way to actually end this war. And then U.S. is um, clearly not seen as an honest broker in this conflict. So if not the United States, who else? Well, mindful of the fact that the United States is the country that is providing the vast majority of weapons to Israel and is the country that has the vast majority of the leverage over Israel, it seems unlikely that this can be done without the U.S. taking that step. But other countries can put pressure on the United States, and they have done so. Take a look at this resolution. It was introduced by 10 countries in the Security Council. It was all of the non-permanent members of the Security Council Three of them, EU allies of the U.S., two of them, uh, America's main Asian allies, Japan and South Korea. This was a clear signal to the United States. You are standing against the entire world and your own allies if you veto this resolution. That pressure worked. More of it is needed, in my view, in order to end this war. All right. 
Always good to have you on, Trida Parsi. Thank you very much. Okay.